So this is a quick video on metric prefixes and unit conversion. So in the metric system, we have these prefixes that make it really useful to express very large or very small numbers of units. For example, grams. You know that we can express not just grams, but we can also do kilograms, which refers to a thousand grams, or milligrams, which is a thousandth of a gram. And that doesn't just apply for grams, it applies for a million other things too. Like for example, uh, meters, we can do millimeters or kilom kilometers, right? A kilometer is a thousand meters, a uh, millimeter is a thousandth of a meter. You can do the same thing for seconds, joules, which is a unit for energy, lots of different things in, um, in physics. And they all use the same prefixes, which makes it really easy. So if we want to turn 25 kilograms into grams, um, if you look at the scale here, you might have heard of the, these ones, sort of the kilogram here, the milla, the centi, um, but there actually are ones beyond it. Mega refers to a million. You'll see the little, little number there. That's actually 10 to the 3 here. 10 to the 6 here is mega, which is a million. 10 to the 9, which is giga, which is a billion. And tera, 10 to the 12, which is a trillion, right? So a trillion grams would make up a teragram, for example. Um, very similar to how you hear in computers, gigabytes, terabytes, megabytes, those kinds of things as well. Going the other way, we have micro, like for example, meters. This is often when we talk about meters. Um, micrometers, nanometers, picometers. So that's 10 to the negative 12. So there's actually a trillion picometers or picoseconds, I should say, in one second, for example. So it's useful to be able to use these prefixes. You should probably have most of these memorized. Um, realistically, the ones you're gonna have to have memorized are sort of the, the kilo and the milla, obviously. Uh, mega is useful to mega. It's easy to remember, mega is a million. Um, micro is good as well, just to remember that. It uses that fancy little U symbol for micro, um, and that's a millionth, right? Milla is actually, a thousandth micro is a million. So for example, let's say we want to turn 25 kilograms into grams. Well, all you got to know is kilo means a thousand. So there's a thousand grams in a kilogram. So if there's a thousand grams in each of those 25 kilograms, this one should be pretty obvious, right? It's just going to be 25,000 grams, right? And we can think about it this way, um, based on this sort of chart up here, right? Um, to go from grams, or sorry, from kilograms to grams, we're getting, we're going to a smaller unit. So that means we're going to have to multiply. Generally, when we're going down this way to a smaller unit, we need to multiply to get there, right? If we're going to go this way, get bigger, a bigger unit means there's going to be less of them, so we have to divide. And each one of these steps is essentially a thousand, right? So we're going this way, so we're going to go times one thousand. Okay, so let's try to go from 12.2 nanometers to meters. Well, a nanometer, it's tiny, it's 10 to the negative 9 nanometers. Uh, that's what one nanometer is, 10 to the negative 9 meters, right? Um, so in order to do this, we're going to go to the left by 1,000. So we're going to divide by 1,000. Then we're going to basically divide by 1,000 again. And then we're going to divide by 1,000 again, right? So we're going to divide by a thousand three times, or you can think about that as dividing by a billion or moving the decimal place nine times to the left, right? So if we look at this number, 12.2, and we move the decimal place one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we have to move it a whole bunch of times, right? We're going to end up with, I think we're going to end up with seven zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros in front of that one, two, two. And of course you can always check by counting. Remember we started with the decimal place there and we moved it nine times. So let's just double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. We ended up in the right spot. So that we end up with a very small number. Um, and of course, when we end up with a really small number like this, it's always good to write it in scientific notation, right? It's a little easier than writing out all those, um, all those zeros. So we can look at this as just one point, Two two times ten to the negative, and we can count again. I think two three four five six seven eight. Right, ten to the negative eight. Right, and oh, I should put units here. Obviously, this is in meters. Right, that's the answers. 
Which one of these do you like better? In this case, I actually like this one better because there's, you know, the zeros, there's a lot of zeros, um, which can be a bit annoying. Notice how, in this case, maybe to get the answer a little bit more straightforwardly, we could have just remembered that there's 10 to the negative nine nanometers in a meter, and you could have just divided this by 10 to the negative nine, and you would have got directly to this answer. You could have done that with your calculator. Though you don't really need calculators for these metric conversions. Uh, lastly, 124 gigajoules to joules. Giga, that's another one you probably should remember. It's one step higher than mega, or I should say three steps higher than mega. It's a thousand times more than a mega meter, or mega joule, I should say. Um, so it's 10 to the nine, which is a billion. There's a billion joules in a gigajoule. And um, so if there's a billion joules in a gigajoule, 124, we're going to multiply by 10 to the 9. So I'll show you that in this case. 124, we're basically, we're starting here and we're going 1, 2, 3 steps down. So we're going to multiply by 10 to the 9. Right? And if we do that, I mean, that's, that's okay as an edge. That's sort of in scientific notation already. But in scientific notation, we like to sort of put the decimal after the first significant digit. So 1.24 and... It's like we move the decimal here two places to make that number even bigger. So it's actually going to be times 10 to the 11. There we go. That is, oh, I, I keep on forgetting to put units here. But that's in joules, right? That's the answers in joules. So really, these should you should be able to do without looking at this. Um, so that's something that you should practice. Um, at least, at least again, those middle ones. Giga again. That's that's one in joules. We often see gigajoules, so it, it might be an important one to know as well. Okay, and the closely related subject uh, to that previous one is unit conversion, that you also got to be proficient at. Um, unit conversion is very important um, when you're doing physics because often we're given stuff, uh, uh, problems in a whole sorts of different, all sorts of different units, and we have to convert them to specific units before we can do any calculations or else you're just going to end up with a bunch of nonsense in your answer. So um, I will provide you with these conversion factors when you need them um, and you really don't need any more than this. These are sort of the ones you'll need in this course. It's sort of a whole bunch of lengths uh, between imperial, metric, um, and then sort of volume and mass ones are useful as well and then specific ones of physics sort of force, pressure, and energy. Those are ones you maybe haven't seen before in in other math courses and stuff like that, but those will be useful as well. So let's start off. So everyone converts units a little bit different maybe. Maybe you've learned it different ways in the past. I'm gonna show you the way that I think is most effective for physics. You're gonna make the least mistakes and oft, and uh, it's actually quite useful to do some unit analysis, which we're gonna get into later. So first of all, we wanna convert 2.34 gallons to liters. Well, we can look up at our table, which one of these conversion factors is gonna be useful. Let's look for gallons and liters. Well, right here, I see that one gallon is equal to 3.79 liters. And if I wanna convert, you know you're gonna like either divide by 3.79 or multiply by 3.79, and that's how conversion works, right? You're gonna basically apply that as a unit rate by dividing or multiplying. Now that can be confusing, like which one do I do? Do I divide or multiply? One way is just to think about it, right? Liters are smaller than gallons because about four liters goes into a gallon. So we should end up with a smaller number, or sorry, a larger number here, right? Because there's gonna, in 2.34 gallons, there's gonna be more liters because each of those gallons contains about four liters. So thinking about it that way, you can just think, oh, I need to multiply. That works. But if you want a little bit more of a rigorous way to do it, let me just zoom in here. I like to apply what's called a conversion factor, 2.34 gallons. And what I want to do is I want to multiply that by the conversion factor. Now the conversion factor I know is one gallon for every 3.79 liters. But that's not the only conversion factor. Equivalent to that conversion factor is 3.79 liters for every one gallon. Right? So you have two essential conversion factors. And these things are both equal to one essentially because a gallon and a liter are the, or sorry, a gallon and 3.79 liters are the same thing, right? So it's like you're dividing something by itself. So these both sort of equal one. 
So if we multiply this expression by one of these, we're not actually changing anything, we're just changing the units, because multiplying by one doesn't actually change the answer. So anyways, the question is which one do we choose? And the answer is that I want to get rid of these gallons. I want the gallons here to cancel out with something. How do you make something cancel out? You divide by it. So I want to be able to divide by gallons. That tells me that this one is the correct answer, right? Because if I write this in here, so times 3.79 liters for every one gallon, these gallons here and these gallons here are going to cancel out. And what do the numbers tell me to do? Well, they just tell me to do 2.34 times 3.79. When I do that, I get 8.87, oops, get the pen out, 8.87 liters, if I round to three significant digits, because the original question is three significant digits. So that makes sense. We multiplied, the number got bigger. It's not, the reason why it's sometimes good to do this sort of conversion factor way um, is because it's not always obvious whether to multiply or divide. Let's go to the next question. 200 feet to miles. So again, looking sort of through our answers, which one of these is going to be most useful? Which one has feet and miles? There it is. If you don't happen to know that 5280 feet, 5280 feet makes up a mile, that's okay. I, I don't remember that number because I live in Canada. Um, so we're going to use that conversion factor. So we're going to start off with the 200 feet. And remember, I can either multiply this by one mile over 5280 feet or 5280 feet over one mile. I want the feet to cancel out there though, right? So I want the feet on the bottom. So in this case, I'm going to multiply by one mile for every 5280 feet. In that case, those are going to cancel out. And then what do I do with the numbers? Well, I'm just going to do 200 times 1, right, basically, divided by 5280. So in other words, it's just basically 200, 200 divided by 5280, which I'm doing on my calculator right now. That gives me 0. Oops, sorry. 0 0.0379 miles, right? Assuming that this is three significant figures here, we can round our answer to three significant figures here. Otherwise, it'd be about 0 0.04 miles, okay? That makes sense. Moving on to the next question. Pounds to milligrams. Okay, well, let's look at our conversion factors. Are there any that are pounds to milligrams? Um, not really, right? Maybe the closest is, actually, let me erase these other ones so that I don't get confused. Uh, pounds to kilograms. We have pounds, sorry, to milligrams. We have pounds to kilograms here, right? We have pounds to tons, but that doesn't really help us. So really the only one we got there is pounds to kilograms. So this one we won't be able to do in one step, right? Um, not as easy, but let's start off by converting pounds to kilograms since that's the conversion factor we have, right? So we're going to start off with 150 pounds and then we're going to multiply that by the conver conversion factor of 1 kilogram per 2.2 pounds or 2.2 pounds per 1 kilogram. So again, we want the pounds to be on the bottom. So we're going to do 1 kilogram over 2.2 pounds. LBS is pounds. Um, just in case you didn't know that, I know it's a bit strange, just the way they do. So if we were to do this, the pounds and the pounds would cancel out, and we're left with kilograms. We don't want kilograms, though. We want milligrams. So if you think back to what we did above, right, on the, the metric prefixes, we need to be able to convert kilograms to milligrams. I'm going to do it in two steps just because I don't want to confuse you. Let's convert kilograms to grams first, right? So in order to convert kilograms to grams, we know there's a thousand grams in a kilogram, right? So the conversion factor I want to use here is 1,000 grams per kilogram. Look what happens here. Those kilograms are going to cancel out. Now I've converted the pounds, the original pounds, to grams if I were to multiply and divide all those numbers. We're almost there. I need to multiply by 1,000 again, right? To turn those 1,000 milligrams per gram. 
All right, so I just applied another conversion factor. So these grams cancel out now, and I'm left with milligrams. So these are sort of the units that we're left with at the very end. So if you look at the math we're gonna do here, we're gonna multiply 150, we're gonna divide it by 2.2, we're gonna multiply it by 1,000, multiply it by 1,000. Um, and he's, sort of what I like to do, I like to do all the multiplication first. So 150 times 1,000 times 1,000 divided by 2.2, which is on the bottom. Throwing that into my calculator right now, 150 times 1,000 times 1,000 divided by 2.2 gives me 68 million 181,818.2. Now, that's a big number with a lot of significant figures. If we were to round it to two significant figures or three, the question, the original question maybe has two or three. Let's just assume it's two this time. Um, it's about 68 million, oops, I always do that. 68 million milligrams for 150 pounds. It makes sense because a milligram is tiny, right? And a pound is like a substantial amount of, of weight. Okay, going on to the very last one. I encourage you to try this one yourself. Pause the video here. Um, try it yourself. Unpause it if you get stuck or you want to check your final answer. I'm going to do this last one pretty fast. Okay, so... 2,540 fluid ounces, that's what those F-L-O-Z is. So we actually have a fluid ounce unit here. I'm gonna erase that. We have a fluid ounce right here. We have fluid ounces to milliliters. So a fluid ounce is about 30 milliliters, right? Unfortunately, it doesn't help to us too much because we wanna get it into gallons, right? So we're gonna to need to do a multiple step one here as well. Maybe a lot of steps. So we're going to start off with 2540 fluid ounces, right? <clears throat> and let's use that first conversion factor we know. Let's get into milliliters first. Now you could, by the way, look up a conversion between fluid ounces and gallons. But for this exercise, I just want to show you that you can just use what's above here to give you the answer. So it's sort of strange because we're converting from metric to imperial, or sorry, from imperial to metric back to imperial. Um, but that's okay. This is just an exercise in can you use these factors? Okay, so 2540 fluid ounces times, well, the conversion factor, uh, we want the fluid ounces on the bottom, right, to cancel out the fluid ounces. So 29.6 milliliters per fluid ounce. Now we can cancel that out so I don't have to continue to say fluid ounces. Continuing on with that, we now want to get milliliters to gallons somehow. Unfortunately, we don't have that conversion either, but we do have gallons to liters, right? We have gallons to liters right there. So again, sort of taking it one step at a time, that means we need these milliliters in liters, right? And in this case, I know I want to convert milliliters to liters. There's a thousand milliliters in a liter. I want the milliliters to cancel out. So I'm going to put the milliliters on the bottom. There's a thousand milliliters in one liter. That's going to cancel out those milliliters, right? So I'm going to end up dividing by a thousand there. And then lastly, now that we have it in liters, we want to convert the liters to gallons. So again, I want the liters to be on the bottom because I want to cancel out. So 3.79 liters per one gallon. And what's gonna happen, these liters are gonna cancel out, and we could do all that math. So essentially 2540 times 29.6, times one times one, that doesn't matter, divided by 1,000, divided by 3.79. If you do that, you should get 2540 times 29.6, divided by 1,000, divided by 3.79 should give you 19.84-ish. Um, if we look at the, yeah, four, four significant figures, if we assume the original question had four significant figures, we're gonna round that to 19.84. Oops, 19.84 gallons. Just in case you're curious, um, there are actually 128 fluid ounces per gallon. Per gallon. So if we wanted to convert it directly, all we would need to do is take that 25, 
2540 divided by 128, and we end up getting the same number if you do that calculation. Um, again, strange with Imperial, they use these sort of ran seemingly random numbers to do this as opposed to the metric system, but that's just the way it is. In this course, it's going to be useful to be able to work with both systems.